If you've had the chance to taste uh, many wines, to appreciate, to drink uh, many wines, you've had uh, the opportunity to see just how unique each wine's nose is, how many different types of nose, noses of wine that can represent, how many different kinds of aromas that represents. You see, each wine has its own set of aromas, and those are going to change over time. Now, the question is, where do these aromas come from? Why is it important for you to understand where they come from and how it's going to help you uh, understand the wine a little more? Now, there are three types of aromas. The first one is primary aromas. Secondary aromas is the second one, and you've guessed it, tertiary aromas is the third type of aromas we have. And each type comes in at, the, at a different moment in the life of a wine, from grape all the way to the moment you open the bottle and then in the glass. So our first uh, type of aroma is primary aromas. Primary aromas are um, what we call varietal aromas. So each grape variety is going to have its own set of different aromas. So Chardonnay, for example, is going to have aromas of apple and lemon. Um, those are varietal. So they come and are unique to the grape variety. But it's not just the grape variety, it's also the climate and the uh, soil. So these two are going to affect uh, that signature, those different aromas, in a different way. So they're going to express or bring out certain aromas in the Chardonnay depending on the climate, on the uh, soil. So those are primary aromas. Primary aromas are mainly going to be the, uh, the, the fruity family of aromas, floral aromas, and then we're going to have mineral aromas. So those are mainly the primary aromas. They tell you about where the wine comes from before uh, it was a wine, when it's a grape, and when it's on a vine. And we move on to secondary aromas. Now, secondary aromas come from the wine making process. So, <clears throat> from the maceration, from the two uh, fermentations, so alcoholic fermentation, so when the grape juice turns into wine, and then what we call the malolactic fermentation, which is another type of fermentation I won't go into. Um, and then the, all these um, different types of fermentation and macerations that we can do are going to give the wine a signature uh, nose and set of different aromas that are unique to the wine. So, for example, um, carbonic maceration is a type of maceration that's used uh, for making Beaujolais Nouveau. Signature banana, that's the aroma. Um, we then have um, a few dairy, um, a few aromas in the dairy family that are going to come, that are secondary aromas. Um, we are going to have things such as brioche or butter that can also be secondary aromas. And finally, we have tertiary aromas. Now, tertiary aromas are once the wine is made, as it ages, uh, it's going to develop tertiary aromas. So tertiary aromas come from the aging process, and that aging process can be either in bottle or and in barrel. So when we put a wine, a finished wine, in a barrel, the barrel is going to give that wine aromas. 
firstly from the wood, so from the barrel itself, and secondly, what gives tertiary aromas is oxygen that is in contact with the wine. So the oxygenation of the wine is going to give and develop over time tertiary aromas. So aromas of the, the oak uh, of the barrel that we're going to get off from the wood are going to be uh, things like vanilla. Uh, then we're going to have burnt, no, burnt kind of notes that um, come from the toasting of the barrel. So that's when they heat up the inside of the barrel. So we're going to get notes of toasted bread, for example, are typical of, of uh, a barrel. Uh, we're going to get different kind of smoky notes. All those come from the barrel. And then we have the oxygenation that are going to bring different type of tertiary aromas. So this also happens if you don't put the wine in, in, in a barrel and if a wine goes in a bottle, I'm sure you've realized that the, the, the nose of the wine is going to develop over time. And that's because of the exchange between oxygen and the wine through the cork. So the cork will let in a certain amount of oxygen over time, slowly, slowly. That is going to change the nose, of the aromatic profile of that wine and it's going to bring it tertiary notes. So we're going to, over time, move from those primary aromas of fresh kind of fruit to more kind of dried notes. The, the, the floral notes are gonna to move to more dried flowers. We're going to uh, change to, so for white wines, we're going to start developing tertiary notes. Are going to, typical are going to be almond, are going to be hazelnut, they're gonna be Honey um, uh, are uh, going to be truffle. Those are notes that are developed, tertiary notes that are developed over time in a white wine and in a red wine. We're going to start um, seeing certain uh, kinds of spices. We're going to go uh, from what was fresh fruit to kind of undergrowth. Uh, so uh, what you, the moss that you have in the, in the forest, those kind of... Um, Leaves uh, are, are going to be typical. Mushroom are going, is going to be typical uh, of a red wine with a bit of age. We're going to have kind of gamey notes. So notes of game as in um, the, the animal, you know, pheasant and, and uh, hare. That, those kind of aromas are going to be tertiary aromas uh, that we find in red wine. So now you know there, there are three types of aromas, primary, secondary, tertiary. Now, why is it useful to know these aromas? And simply, the answer is because it says so much about the wine. If we have a wine that's dominated by primary aromas, we're going to be uh, on a wine that's in its youth. Uh, the aromas then, if you dive in, can let you know about the grape variety. If you know about the grape variety, you probably are gonna be able to understand the region. Um, secondary aromas tell you how the wine is, has been made, the, the winemaking process. And finally, tertiary aromas are gonna tell you whether the, the, the wine is oaked or not oaked, whether the wine is old, how old it is. It's going to, it's, it really is a window into the wine. So. Spotting aromas is very difficult. Being able to, to see whether we're on primary, secondary, or tertiary aromas, or a blend of those, will tell us a lot about the wine. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. I look forward to your questions, to helping you out in uh, uh, with, with any question you may have, uh, particularly around the nose of wine, aromas, um, the bouquet. And uh, I'll see you in a very, very soon in our next video. And until then, santé.